Hello and welcome everyone to Mock Duck Plays Games on Facebook and YouTube. Today I'm going to show you how to get your VCS initially booted up, everything set up both in Atari OS and Windows, and uh, show you how to get the controllers and everything hooked up so you're ready to go. Okay, so when you first boot up your Atari VCS, you're going to be asked to hook up either a classic or modern controller or a keyboard. And that's to get through the initial menu process. Remember to pair your controller. You will hold the Fuji button down for about two seconds. Let it flash really quick and quickly it'll pair. You will then see a long update process. Uh, I have seen some people actually mess up their Atari VCS by rebooting the OS while they're still updating. It can take a really long time. I've seen it take as long as 20, 30 minutes in some cases to update the firmware. You will be updating the firmware as well as the OS level software. So it can take a while. Just take a break, let it do its thing. It'll reboot perhaps a couple of times, at least twice, and then you'll be ready to move on. At this point, too, I would note that you do need to set up your Wi-Fi connection. That's, of course, in order to get the updates to the Atari VCS. So hopefully you don't run into any problems at this step. I recommend just hardwiring it with an Ethernet cable, but you can set up and go through wireless at this time. Okay, so now we're getting ready for account creation. And at this point, what you're going to do is either select a guest if you don't want to create an account yet, sign in on an existing account if you already have one, or create a new account. If you choose to create a new account, you'll be accepting some legal agreements, selecting your avatar, picking a display name, adding your email address, setting your PIN, setting your birth date, and then finally verifying your account. Atari VCS will send you an email to the email you've registered. You'll go and confirm that email and then you'll be all set up. Okay, now that we are in Atari OS, it's time to connect any of the remaining controllers that you would like to connect to the VCS. So just go over to System, Devices, see what devices you have paired already and if you need to pair new controllers okay so just take your controller hold the button down for about two seconds let it go into pairing mode you'll know because it's flashing quickly All right, so now that the Atari OS side is ready to go, let's take a look at getting Windows installed. I'm not going to show you exactly how to get Windows onto a USB. I do have a separate video for that, but I will say that it involves basically going to the Microsoft Windows Media Creation Tool, downloading the ISO file for Windows, using Hasleo Win to USB to get that ISO file onto the USB SSD that you intend to put into your Atari VCS. So now that you've got your controllers, a mouse, and a keyboard, we're ready to go. So now we're ready to get Windows going. So you can, if you want to, power down the Atari VCS, plug in your USB SSD with Windows 10 ready to be installed on it. Or you can do it from the Atari OS system, go to the PC mode app and restart it from there. So as long as the USB is plugged in when the Atari VCS reboots, it'll start booting into PC mode. Because you're installing Windows 10 for the very first time, it does take quite a long time. You do have a bunch of screens you need to get to. Some customization, you'll want to decide whether you're using an active license or a trial license. And then ultimately, you will eventually, after several restarts and opportunities to update your security, be ready to go. 
I do strongly recommend that the very first time you boot into PC mode, make sure you go to the Windows settings update as many times as you need to. So that you've got all the security patches, all the antivirus patches, and don't forget the special driver installations for AMD. They aren't updated by default in Windows, but they do list them as additional drivers that you can install. It's not an option. Even if it is, do it anyway. So make sure you do all the optional updates. You can skip the Windows preview if you want. And all the required updates. Give it plenty of time to reboot a few times. And then we're back into Windows and we're ready to move on. The next thing I strongly recommend that you do in Windows is to do a Google search or a Bing search or whatever you prefer for AMD R1606G driver, AMD 1606G driver. You'll get that directly from the AMD website. You can use their driver installation software program if you want, or you can find it directly. Make sure you do update the AMD driver. This is really important for that 1606G chipset. Make sure that it is fully compatible and up to date for Windows mode. So once we've got everything set, all of our drivers updated, we're pretty much ready to go other than pairing the controllers. All right, so then the last thing let's do is make sure that we get both our classic and our modern controllers hooked up in PC mode. So you go through the settings into the Bluetooth and other devices. You will click on add Bluetooth or other device. Bluetooth. And... Hold the button down for about two seconds. Make sure it's flashing quickly. That means it's in pairing mode. Give it a second to connect. And there we are. It'll be setting up. Let's do the same then for our classic controller. Add Bluetooth or other device. Bluetooth. Hold down the button for two seconds. All right, everyone, and that's it. Thanks so much for watching. If you have any questions, please do put them in the comment below. Give the channel a like if you'd like to spread the word to others. Subscribe if you want these videos in your feed. Have fun.